Timers on your mark. Ready. Hey there, my name is Darren Skolnick. I'm 18 years old and I've been climbing for, gosh, I think it's about 15 years now. I started when I was three years old, so it'd be right around that. When I was really young, we're talking like one, two years old, I'd climb on everything. Even when I was smaller than that, I'd be climbing out of my crib. So my parents actually wanted me to learn how to do it safely and make a sport out of it. And they brought me to the local gym. It was Planet Granite at the time in California. That's where we lived. And I, I fell in love with it, and I've been climbing ever since. I started competitively climbing um, right around middle school, so seventh grade. Uh, sixth grade, I'm sorry. Yeah, sixth grade. And love it. I first got into speed. It was my first ever youth regionals. Um, I was there for lead or top rope actually. I was in youth C and I didn't perform how I wanted to. I really wanted to go to divisionals and nationals and my coach told me to hop on speed. I was super opposed to the idea at that point. I didn't really know what speed was and everyone looked down upon speed. But I said, all right, I'll give it a try. I hopped in the wall. It was jug hall speed because I was in C, so not the official, uh, not the official I have to see route. But I got third of the competition and I continued from there and it just clicked with me. In competition level climbing, there are three main disciplines. There's bouldering, which is low walls, you're, uh, you're close to the ground, and there's a cushiony crack pad below you, almost like a gymnastics mat. Uh, there's also lead climbing, which is a stereotypical type of climbing. It's higher walls, you're clipping yourself in um, for safety, and generally in competition, you might go 50, 60 feet up. And then the third discipline, my favorite, is speed. Uh, it's a standardized wall, unlike bouldering in sport. Um, the wall stays the same all the time, same wall at the Olympics. You can practice on it um, in all major competitions. And it's simply based off of how, how fast you can go up it. I do my warm-up in four different parts. I start off by running just to get some cardio in, get my blood flowing. It's also a good mental exercise to get me focused for the wall, put in some music. Um, then I do some dynamic stretching. Same thing with that, it gets my blood flowing a little more, but it also stretches me out. Um, I try to do similar movements to what I'd be doing on the wall. Then I do some static stretching just to get a little more mobility in so I can move um, you know, at my full range of motion. Then I get on the wall, kind of warm up my fingers, uh, warm up my body on, on the bouldering wall. And after that, I do some fast runs, um, not on the speed wall, but kind of on jugs. Uh, I do a couple of drills just to get my fast twitch muscles going, and I'm ready to hop on the speed wall. Ready. 
The start of the speed wall is really interesting. Everyone climbs it differently. So some people do what we call the quote unquote normal beta, where if you count the starting holds, you have one, two, three, and people will go out and use the fourth hold. There's a couple of different places you can grab it. But more recently, people have been skipping that hold and they go directly from the third hold to the fifth and sixth hold. And there's a couple of different ways to do it. One of the older ways to do it, we call it the Reza. It's named after a guy named Reza who used to hold world record. And he would grab that hold, uh, left hand on the lower part, the pinch of it, and right hand on the jug. He would run his feet across, and then he would get a right foot where his left hand was on the pinch, and go up to five and then six, if you number the holds. And then there's something even newer that's out called the Tomoe skip, also named after a guy, Tomoe Narasaki, who invented this. And he would go up to the third hold, and instead of hitting the pinch with his left hand, he would match the jug with both hands, the big ink up part of the top. And then he would get a left foot up to the pinch, and he would throw his right foot, um, right foot up to the foothold, and go hands uh, five and six. The res is a little bit slower right now. I still do it, but I'm going to switch to the Tomoe soon. You just take more time swinging your feet out, uh, out to the left where the Tomoe is more direct. Um, the res conserves your momentum a little bit, and the Tomoe requires a bit more mobility in terms of getting your feet high, but it tends to be a little bit faster just because it's so directly straight up the wall. Besides actually speed climbing, um, for my training, I do a lot of weightlifting. I try to gain strength and power so I can move quickly. Um, I do some fast velocity training that would be like box dumps or something like that where I'm moving as quickly as I can. Um, similar to weights, but just without the weights, so another type of workout. I do some hill sprints, um, a lot of stretching too, and then much of what I do is mental preparation. So that would be meditation, visualizing, having a good run, uh, clean runs and competition, all of the above. My first ever nationals for speed. I was, I want to say 11 or 12 years old, um, and I got 20th there. It was on jug hall speed, so actually not the standardized wall because I was too young for that one. Um, and I was a little disappointed with my results. I really wanted to be in semifinals, which I did not make. But the next year I came back, I trained really hard, and I got fifth. And I was super jazzed on that, um, and I just kept going from there. I got third the next year, qualifying myself for the Youth World Championships, which was in Innsbruck, Austria. I got 16th there. I made finals with the top 16, and then I false started. Uh, but the next year I came back, I got, I believe it was third again at Nationals, um, and I got 15th in, uh, in Youth World Championships in Moscow. Then the next year I was fourth, and I made the Youth Pan American Championships, which I won not only for speed, but for bouldering and, uh, and combined too, which is bouldering sport and speed together. I was fifth in lead, so very psyched on that. After winning a Youth Pan American Champion for bouldering, speed, and combined, it really helped to boost my confidence. I knew that I could compete at a high level, or internationally specifically, um, and you know, going into more competitions like I'm going into now for Youth World Championships, I just feel more confident in my abilities, more comfortable with myself. This year, I just came back from Youth Nationals for the second place in speed, and I'm heading off to Youth World Championships in Russia. I also came back earlier this year from a World Cup, which is the professional level circuit as opposed to youth, and that one was in Utah. So at my last Youth Nationals, I came in second for speed. Uh, it was the first time that they did a bracket at Youth Nationals. So essentially they take the top eight people based on their times to finals, and then they have them race against each other, and it's knockout rounds, so you can think of like Sudden Death or March Madness if you're familiar with uh, that in basketball. Uh, they have one versus eight, two versus seven, and then you advance if you win your race. So I won my first two races, um, and then I was in what we call the big final, which was the race against one and two, and uh, I lost that one, unfortunately, I had a slip, but I'm still very happy how I did. I had the fastest time in the competition, which was 6.3, 6.38 seconds up the standardized 15 meter wall, and that got me a spot at the Youth World Championships. Yeah, so going into Worlds, um, I'm pretty happy with myself, I'm calm, relaxed, I, I wish my time was a little bit better and I, I wish I was a little more consistent, being I can hit fast times in every run, but, you know, of course everyone's going to have that feeling before every competition they go to. So I'm really just happy to have the spot there and um, 
I'm ready to go and do what I can. I'm, I'm hoping to win, of course, like, uh, like anyone would be, but we'll see what happens. This is my second to last day before competition, before Youth World Championships. So I really just want to have clean, smooth runs, something that can get my, my head in the right space before the competition and get me mentally prepared. And generally that's consistency. Um, speed is always nice, but that's secondary to me. I like to be able to have smooth runs where I'm hitting around the same time every single time. So after Worlds, my next competition is going to be a National Cup at Reach Climbing and Fitness. That's where we are right now in Philadelphia. Um, and that would set me up for some, uh, some even bigger uh, national level competitions at the adult circuit. And hopefully after that I'll be doing international cups, uh, world cups on the, on the open adult circuit. That's the goal, to be on the world cup circuit. So when I'm on the world cup circuit, assuming or hoping I get there, um, you know, I, I want to be pre prepared. I'd like to have my time you know, somewhere in the 5 second range uh, for the 15 meter speed wall. Uh, that would allow me to perform pretty well, be a finalist, and hopefully even medal. And after that, we'll see. Maybe, maybe the Olympics. That's in 2024 and 2028. Speed will be its own discipline. I think climbing is already progressing as a sport. You see a lot more gyms opening up. More films and documentaries are coming out um, about climbing. Now that it's in the Olympics, there's more attention towards it. And of course, social media helps everything that's interesting boom. And climbing, specifically speed, is, is blowing up there. Um, so I'm, I'm personally hoping that it, it booms even more, just more interest uh, from the public in it, hopefully more money in the sport that can help with sponsorships, um, you know, help gyms open up and, you know, help it grow further. So um, I'm not really sure exactly where it's going to end up, but I'm very excited about the big climbing boom that's happening right now. I do believe that World Cups and World Championships are going to become more mainstream. I think it takes time and you know the public has to gain interest in them. I know right now for domestic competitions that they're on ESPN and they have pretty good viewership. ESPN2 and ESPN3 uh, are both showing them so uh, hopefully international competitions will get to that point too. Climbing to me is of course a great workout but it's more than that. I love connecting with people and the climbing community is just so great. We, um, we all get along, everyone's very inclusive. Um, so that's, that's definitely a big draw of it to me. Uh, I also like love physically being up high. Um, I don't know why. It's, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm just used to it. Uh, but that's a huge appeal to me. Like I feel more safe physically grabbing onto holds and being up in the air. Uh, love it.